So with Procreate still coming up towards the end of the year, I decided that for this video, for this mini tutorial session, to make a video that I think it's gonna be very, very important, which is how to import footage into Procreate. And yes, you can do that right now. It may not look like it, but you uh, let me show you today how you can import footage and also use the features, the new features, such as the animation assist. So if you ever wanted to draw things on top of footage, say you have a short film that you're working from a different software and you have a scene that you're still adding elements, or if you have film that you shot and you're adding 2D elements on top, let me show you today how you can import footage onto Procreate. My name is Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper. So now let's get to it. All right, now that we're here on Procreate 5 Beta, let me show you how you can import footage so that you can work in rotoscoping that footage or adding elements on top of that footage. So in case you don't know, it actually is quite simple how to import footage, but first let me show you what I've actually created. So in terms of my own reference, I'm just gonna open photos. I've created this clip here, it might be a little bit dark for you to see, but it's a bouncing ball animation that I've created. I was working in 3D and I was gonna do a few more deformations to actually, you know, take the best parts of actually working in 3D. But I decided that for this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep it very simple and just a very simple bouncing ball animation without a lot of distortion. So let me go back into Procreate 5 Beta. And now if you go into the photo option right here, you can see that you can import stills, but you can also import footage. So I'm just gonna go into my camera roll. I'm gonna click on that clip. And as you can see, we have access to all of the frames here at the top part of the timeline, as well as we can also play uh, the button, the play button right here and see the animation that we're importing. So in order to get that into Procreate as a new canvas, we just have to click use. And now the uh, Procreate is just importing all of the frames. And we, if we go here into the layers panel, we see all of the frames of this animation have been imported. So now we're just gonna go into settings, preferences, and turn on animation assist. And you see right away the ghosting, which comes from the onion skin feature features, but we can also just hit play and see our animation playing. The reason why it's playing slower is because it's playing on a slower frames per second in this canvas here, in this file, file right here, a different frame rate from the create the where the file or how the file was created, which was at 24. So I'm just gonna set this back at 24 and the animation should be playing correctly. So that's the first tip that I have for you guys, not only how to import the footage, but make sure that you, uh, you are working with the same frame rate as your original file. So now that we have this bouncing ball animation, we're just gonna pause the video and uh, it's a little bit painful, but if you do wanna make changes to this animation right here, you will have to actually create a new layer, select both layers and then group them so that they become one frame because as I've, as I've explained in previous videos and also on my Skillshare course, Procreate understands that every layer is a frame and also that every group is a frame within the animation. So if you are indeed, I'm just gonna open this group here, click on layer 25. I'm gonna pick like um, just a, a bigger brush here. If I make any paintings to this frame right here, now Procreate still understands that this is one frame. Uh, other rather than uh, if those two things were in separate layers, you would understand that these strokes here would be a separate frame. So your animation would actually have a pop within, it wouldn't play correctly in other words. So whenever you're making additions to these frames, you wanna group them individually so that you have options to add layers on top of each frame. So now that we have this uh, first frame here, I just wanna show you what we can do we can first turn uh, down the opacity and then by creating a new layer, we're just gonna go into um, monoline, for example, turn it down a little bit and we can start tracing or doing roto, what we call roto on top of the on top of this original clip. And rotoscoping is a feature that has been used in many films for many, many years in the past and it really was used in animation films and is still used today whenever you want to mask out elements in live action films or you want to uh, do as well as uh, mixed media. If you have like a live action film or a film that you shot just like outdoors and you're uh, adding some of these 2D, 2D layers on top and you're making something uh, that, that we call mixed media. Anyways, 
Uh, this is basically the process to create animations using rotoscope. You can now click on the second layer here, make a new layer, group them again. This is going to be frame two and continue just tracing the, the, these elements. Okay, so we got every group here prepared. So now if we hit play, we're just looking at our animation. There's a little flash here, which uh, to be completely honest, oh, it's because, is it background color? Doesn't make any sense, but I think it's because this layer might be, um, had a little bit of an opacity here. Yeah, there you go. So that's fixed. We see our sphere is just bouncing as per the uh, original information, which is why that's what that's what rotoscope actually is. Like we've, we've drawn things on top of existing footage and that existing footage informed us uh, what to do and where to go. So it's a good reference layer for animation, motion, direction, and many, many things. And that's why rotoscoping is such an important tool. So uh, this is one way to play this animation. The other way is when you're actually using this just totally as a reference and you actually don't want to have the background at your uh, in your final result. So all you have to do is a little bit painful as well, but you do have to open every group here and you're going to be turning off the reference layer or the black and white layer. That was the layer that we used to draw on top. So we're just gonna quickly open these groups here. Okay, so let's just play this animation. And now the bouncing ball is actually happening here on the screen without the reference layer, which we used to draw on top. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did find this video helpful, a like would be super appreciated as well as let me know in the comment section down below if you do plan to use rotoscoping features in Procreate. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more news, reviews, tips and tricks, and speed paint videos. And that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.